and to the republic for which it stands. Tonight. When you raise your right hand and you take your oath to go into the service, you're giving the government a blank check. They risked their lives for country. So I was here at the very beginning. I'm one of the trailblazers. After coming home, the horrors of war often become too much to handle. With alcohol, what I was doing was self-medicating myself because I couldn't get any sleep. Their addictions can lead to suicide. Their actions can lead to jail. I've seen them grow from their orange jumpsuits to their suits. What if the system offered another way to help? Then I don't think the community even knows that it exists. For the next half hour. Because that would have just made it worse and I can't let people down again. A Six News special. Stu, come on up. Let me give this to you. All right. Congratulations. God bless Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Brian Mastery reports second chance for troubled veterans. Good evening. Court is often about punishment, but 20 years ago, Douglas County flipped that idea, starting a first in Nebraska problem solving program. Drug court helped those who had been arrested for nonviolent drug and alcohol offenses. Graduates would see those felony charges dismissed. We are now a year into a similar program in Douglas County, but this one targets a specific population, veterans. I joined the Marine Corps for a reason because I decided that uh, I was going to be the biggest and the baddest. Artillery school graduation, 2004. Posing in front of a howitzer, Justin Poland's gun crew. So a lot of the issues that I had kind of bubbling below the surface, I'd pushed aside. You know, if it's out of sight, out of mind, compartmentalized, put in that little box that we do, especially in the military, throw it in the back of your mind. And uh, what I realized is those boxes are just time bombs. Eventually, they're going to go off. His ticking time bomb exploded in 2016. This Omaha veteran would remember Memorial Day for a different reason. I was arrested uh, shortly after Memorial Day uh, due to a bar fight in, uh, here in Omaha in 2016. Uh, spent six months and one day, I wasn't counting, uh, in Douglas County. When I first met Justin almost a year ago, he was in an orange jumpsuit suit. He was shackled at his wrist. He was shackled at his ankles, and he was in court. Good afternoon, Judge. Eventually, Justin Poland turned in his county-issued jumpsuit for a shirt and tie. The public needs to know what this program can do for those that are involved in it. Diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, the Marine would be the first one to take part in something new to Nebraska, a treatment court specifically for veterans. This program not only is giving me an opportunity to overcome a, a massive mistake in judgment, um, but also address a lot of the issues that have maybe led me to it. I'm over a year sober now. The last time I had a drink was June 23rd of 2016, when I got my, that last DUI. For Quaith Deloney, it was his fourth drunk driving arrest. What would have happened that night? I could have killed myself or I could have killed somebody else. But luckily, nobody died. As a sophomore at Wayne State preparing for a career in pharmacy, Quaith Deloney felt he had a responsibility to pay back the country who took in his family from a refugee camp in 1999. Civil war in Sudan had forced them to escape. Each night we go to bed, we don't have any food. We don't know what's gonna happen the next day. But coming to America, I know that I can do whatever I, you know, I wanna do because I have an opportunity. Thinking he could always go back to college, Quaith Deloney enlisted in the U.S. Army, infantry. After serving a 16-month tour in Iraq, he came home to Omaha. But the stress of war was too much to handle. With alcohol, what I was doing was self-medicating myself because I couldn't get any sleep. My culture dictate that if you ask for help, you are weak. You don't hear a lot of people say they were excited to get arrested, but I was. Because I was getting to the point that health-wise, I was not healthy because my pancreas was inflating inflaming every three months because of having alcohol abuse. So I felt like, yes, the more time I spent behind, you know, those cages, I will give me more time to heal. I can only speak a one word. This is invested. Every two weeks, the 37-year-old goes before Judge Mark Ashford for a progress report. It's been that way for nearly a year. That's one of his volunteer mentors by his side. But here you are, and look at how well you're doing. And. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're special in any way, but you kind of help a new path for, for those kinds of crimes to be eligible here today. Quaith Deloney and Justin Poland met each other behind bars here at the Veterans Mod at the Douglas County Jail. Quaith is back in college, 
this time at the University of Nebraska Omaha studying law. Good. Scan it. And working full time at the Shadow Lake High V in Papillion. This program have given me a chance that I never knew existed because I thought everything was done. Boom. Perfect. Okay. All right, you want to keep, let's walk over here to more, a little bit more. Justin Poland, who works full time as a car salesman, is reminded of his debt to society and right. second chance through the eyes and on. spirit of his seven year old daughter, Bella. It's the little blue fish. Oh, okay. You're going to have to show me. Cool. Cool. <laughs> there she is. Absolutely adorable. So let's just keep going. Yep. I just think back of getting arrested in front of her. Uh, and then going to jail, not seeing her for six months and a day, uh, and then looking at her now, and I just, you know, part of this is to make her proud, but more than anything is to heal uh, myself, get myself in a, a positive position so that way I can be there as her father. All right. Coming up. The last time we met, you were honest with me, but I had to put you in jail. Setbacks inside Veterans Treatment Court. Then you have these oversleeping on a drug test. Sometimes, in order to go forward, one is forced to step back. They would have it for 40 years. Uh, stemming from the Vietnam War. Can the program save taxpayer dollars? My goal is to reduce the number of people in jail. Plus, taking on the silent killer of veterans. It is hard to see somebody's killed himself. When this six news special, Brian Mastery reports Second Chance for Veterans continues. And then just be straight with me, you get so many drugs or alcohol in the last couple days. For months, Six News has been following the Douglas County Veterans Treatment Court. From the moments when it looked like the drugs or alcohol would win. The last time we met, you were honest with me, but I had to put you in jail. And uh, I think you spent the weekend there. As I sit in jail looking at nothing but concrete and possible convicts, I had to take a long look at what color I was wearing. I had to make a conscious and very honest decision with myself and for my future. I could commit and trust the process and have a bright future ahead. To the triumphs. With all the surgeries and the treatments that you've had, and I know you've been through an H lot of pain, okay, that you haven't relapsed, you know, that you, at least that I'm aware of. You haven't used, you haven't uh, gotten into the opiates or drank or any of that, and I know, and I know that you're suffering. I do know that. And uh, you talk about commitment and courage, uh, that exemplifies it. In the world of addictions and war-torn trauma, setbacks are often a natural step to recovery. No one knows that better than Vietnam veteran Jerry Crawford. Uh, I'm one of the trailblazers getting this started. The third person allowed into the treatment court. I came here because uh, I had a drug habit. I had a heroin habit. And I had a uh, heroin habit for 40 years. Uh, stemming from the Vietnam War, and I, I committed a robbery, okay, while I was under the influence. And since then, I have 595 days of being clean. I've never been that, that much time in my life. Which tells me, you know, he's interested in this program. From the mentors assigned to each veteran, to the lawyers, to the judge, it's one of the few courtrooms where everyone is on the same side. It's a balancing test you know, for all that, for victims, general population, and the defendants themselves. We've always heard Lady Justice is blind, but this pilot project makes her lean a bit towards the vets. They do get special treatment here. There's no question about it. They are, in my opinion, a special class in this country. And the reason for that is, especially now that we have the volunteer army, is these are the folks that are willing to sign their names on the dotted line to in effect give up their lives if necessary for the rest of us. Less than 1% of the population is in the military today. And uh, uh, we know since Vietnam that the veterans haven't been treated particularly well, although it's getting better. We hear about veterans uh, hospitals that really aren't doing well and things of that nature. So I think by virtue of the fact of having that willingness to set themselves out there makes them special to us in America. So how does it work? The county attorney recommends if a veteran is a fit for the program. If so, they plead guilty to the original felony charge. If they get kicked out of the program, they face the jail time connected to that charge. Otherwise, the veterans get a break. And everyone who started in the Douglas County program so far is still there. Veterans are used to repetition, structure, rules of conduct, 
tools they learned in the military. How are you? The treatment court uses that to foster success. The once strangers in this courtroom quickly become family. I was in the Army Reserves 82nd Field Hospital. Nowhere is that better on display than with Deborah Hook. We first met her in June. We couldn't be more proud. I mean, uh, uh, your convicted charge is uh, uh, possession with intent to deliver narcotics, and your work has been fantastic. <laughs> we saw her again in September. Still like to be a substance abuse counselor sometimes? Yes, I would. I She's been clean for nearly a year. You're a very important cog in the machine or the wheel that keeps us going, and we're moving closer and closer before too awfully long we may even have a graduate. It's understood by everyone here. Recovery is fragile and temptation real. Last week, Deborah Hook told her courtroom family of her struggle. Last Wednesday, I found out that my car wasn't fixable, the motor was shot. And her grandson. They have done an MRI and they found two cysts on his brain. And her world felt like it was crashing. I have a lot of guilt for not being there for my daughter for a while, but I got and I almost used. I asked somebody that cared about me enough to tell me no. She almost I used, but didn't. It. And I'm so happy I didn't because that would have just made it worse and I can't let people down again. So I'm sorry that I even thought about it. You've been a role model for your peers, you know. And the fact that you were able to maintain your sobriety when, let's put it this way, maybe had we not all joined together in this program, the decision might have been different. Everything that she's done right should be replicated. I mean, she's thought about the good stuff in her life, and that's what helped her get through this. So the good things, it, it means something. So every day that we ask you to go ahead and write down your three good things, that's something that helped with her. I have so many people that care about me and help me through this, and I just want to thank everybody. Coming up. The only time success comes before work is in dictionary. It's not just about treatment and going to court. The Buddy Check 22 is for the 22 uh, suicides per day uh, for veterans. Many vets choose to give back. One thing I learned while I was in treatment is commitment. When Second Chances for Veterans returns. The 22nd of the month. Whether that falls on a weeknight or a weekend, it carries a weighty significance for veterans. On average, 22 veterans commit suicide per day. So on the 22nd of every month, we as veterans who support each other, we come together at locations around the state of Nebraska to check in with each other, make sure we're doing okay, and just have a simple, friendly conversation. Looking good, dude. At Cunningham's Pub and Grill in the Old Mill neighborhood, the men catch up on conversation. Each one of these guys you see sitting here tonight were once in Douglas County Jail, and that's where we met. That would really be a lifesaver for a lot of guys if we had someone they can transition out of Douglas County. Barry Petaway once thought about suicide during a period of despair and depression. With Lutheran Family Services at Ease program, he now counsels other vets inside the Veterans Mod at the Douglas County Jail and stays connected when they get out. I leave the titles at the door. You know, I'm Barry, you know what I mean? So when I roll up in there and we get to talking about things and we deal with real life. So for them to look at me and say, man, I can't believe you used to be a heroin addict. You know, I can't believe you just a small crack cocaine. Okay. I can't believe you were an alcoholic. I mean, I can't believe you did all those things. And I say, well, I did, you know, but you don't have to do those things today. He's lived a very full life. Uh, he's gone through a lot of stuff, and he's definitely right there with us. He's been through a lot of the same things a lot of us have. Um, and so when he talks to us, you can tell he's, he's right there. He's been in the dirt with us. A few veterans of the Veterans Treatment Court, like Justin Poland, are here too. Quaith Deloney lost two friends to suicide. His unit was set to return from Iraq, only to be put back into action because of an ordered troop surge. It's different to lose somebody in combat because, you know, it's part of his job. But it's hard to see somebody's killed himself because they don't want to deal with it anymore. All you have to do is take For Army vet Justin Erickson, his breakthrough came during an inpatient treatment at Warrior's Heart in Texas. I have such a different outlook on uh, life. You know, uh, as you guys heard when I was uh, first came into this thing, I tried committing suicide actually two times. Um, the second time, um, thank God my dog was there. Uh, she was actually the one that knocked the... Uh, gun out of my hand, knocked it away from my head. Um, but the outlook I have on life is 360 degrees different than what it was. It's a place where even the defendant can be a resource for the others. 
The six new special Second Chance for Troubled Veterans will return after the break. The Douglas County Veterans Treatment Court hasn't yet had a graduate, but its impact is already being felt outside the metro. In April, Lancaster County started the second Veterans Treatment Court. How are you today? Um, persevering. While Nebraska is late to the game for this type of court as far as states go, the first one began in New York in 2008. The Douglas County Veterans Treatment Court is already growing enough to have a new name. The Veterans Court Met Metropolitan Veterans Treatment Court. And God bless our Metropolitan Veterans Court. Metropolitan, since the court recently extended its reach to veterans outside the county. Yeah, yeah. So far, there are 22 veterans in treatment. Is a system of lawyers, parole officers, veteran organizations, volunteers, and the victims of the original crime have a say in the process. The ultimate goal remains helping a veteran overcome battlefield scars to create positive citizens. Judge Ashford did the math. What if these vets were in prison instead? We're saving the taxpayers here, just in our group, about a half a million bucks. Maybe and not. studies from other states have shown that veterans treatment court graduates are much less likely to reoffend than others who have done their time. To me, honesty, I take very seriously. Um, no clue where it comes from, but it's, it's something that I, I take a lot of pride in. Moving on to phase two. Come on up, let me give As it As the veterans achieve different levels of progress, they get a permanent reminder in the form of a personalized dog tag. Phase two, huh? That's a big deal. Symbols of accountability and lasting recovery. So you're going to be there tomorrow? Yes, Your Honor, I guess I will. For yes. Quaith Deloney, 2018 is shaping up to be a good one. He's expected to graduate twice from UNO, and Veterans Treatment Court. Not only veterans deserve a second chance, I think everybody deserves a second chance. Very proud of him. On one Thursday afternoon, Jerry Crawford's sister addressed the court, saying it was good to have the brother she used to know back. The people that I associate with and be around now are people that brings great joy to my life. I've met so many people that I've never known you know, that it was possible to feel like this. And his mentor will be there every step. My mentor, Mr. Eddie Nelson, has bestowed in me that excellence is never an accident. It's the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent direction, skillful execution, and a vision to see obstacles as opp opportunities. Friday's Daddy Daughter Day in this For side. Justin Poland, the PTSD therapy continues. But as he would tell you. What do you have to do to get the eggs to hatch? <laughs> Love of family can quickly bring one out of the shadows. I'm not only hopeful that I can not only get past my misstep uh, in judgment, but also uh, make my life better not only just for myself, but for my family, especially my seven-year-old daughter.